In today's video, we take a look at all vehicles in PUBG and completely analyze all of them. It has taken some tests, gas mileage, top speed, acceleration, etc. We've done a lot. Damage, well, you name it. So we're going to go through it all today. We got a bit of a thing going on here where we're going to introduce one vehicle. And then in between each and every one of them, there's going to be one tip or trick that you could use in your gameplay. So while you learn about all the vehicles in PUBG, you will also learn of quick ways to improve your overall game using vehicles in PUBG. Lastly, but not least, thank you to PUBG for sponsoring this video in the series of five tips and tricks videos coming to you. Some players might think, why would you need to know about gas? It's really good to know how long a vehicle could go. So I went through this lap I created where it could go full boost all the time. First off with the bikes here, and then we had cars with boost, and then the end cars without boost and all of them slapped together. Now this is something small, but just to give you an idea of how much effort went into this video. For those people that like numbers and statistics, I've made a Google spreadsheet for you guys to use if you wish. There's a link for it in the description with all the data that I've collected through these tests. First up, the Dacia, also known as the Dacia, but I mean, if you gotta do it right, it's the Dacia, but call it whatever you want. It is one of the best cars in PUBGs, by far one of the fan favorites, I believe. It has an incredible top speed of 130. It goes really well on road as well as off road. However, it does have its limitations. It has a very hard time accelerating uphill. So you want to make sure that if you go off road, go in two hilly areas, you got to keep it on an incline that's somewhat still climbable for the car. While it is a fantastic vehicle to drive fast in, it does come with a price off road. It is in the higher end when it comes to protection too. You have a lot of cover and it comes with 1800 health points. Now this means that in order to blow this sucker up, an AKM will take 39 bullets. Binds to swap seats to drive anything is a really important thing to have in PUBG. Now, first of all, for driving, I have W and shift W. That means whatever seat as I just did, I go into, I just start driving and I'll be in the driver's seat. And for the two passenger seats, the two first one, I use E and Q. That way I can easily swap between these two first seats or all three of them. And then I use F1 and F2 for the previous two. But mostly I just use E and Q for drive-by shootings and that type of stuff. So that works really well because that way I can just swap seats, get back if I want. And if say I park at this house here and I want to get out on the other side, swap seats real quickly and then I'm on my way. Now to the buggy. One vehicle that I feel like is being overlooked a little bit too much because back in the day it used to spin out of control as soon as the tire was shot. This is not the case anymore. It will keep on flying. It used to have no protection from behind. You can no longer get shot from behind. So this is a very, very good vehicle both on road, off road and everything. With its fuel efficiency, you will most likely never ever need a gas can. So this one is a speeder. It goes off road. It goes on road. It does everything. But it's not good for duos and squads. So if you're a solo player, this is one of my go-to vehicles after having looked into them. It just, it works really well, but duo squads, it's not fun being on that back of it. We all know this. If you want to master the drive-by shooting techniques using your vehicle as bait, anything like that, there's one important thing to know. Whenever you swap seats using magical binds that we just previously mentioned, you gotta hold down W. That way the vehicle will keep on rolling. If you do not do this, what will happen is the vehicle will start breaking just as if you jump out of the vehicle without holding it. So let's say we swap without holding W. Pretty hard to shoot people like that. The SEMA. One of the three unique vehicle spawns on Vikendi. This thing is just made for the snow. There's not much about it. It's got kind of an average statistics to it, but it's just good for getting around on Vikendi real quick. It's super small, super good on snow. You'll have a great time with it. I feel like a lot of people are scared to get into leaning out the window and shooting because it looks scary. It looks very, very hard to do, but it actually isn't quite that hard. It takes a little bit of practice, but if you just have good keybinds, remember to hold down the W button as told earlier and when you swap seats, it doesn't get that hard. Let's say you're on a plain road. The crosshair doesn't jump that much. You could easily take people. However, off-road, it does get a little bit more tricky. But if you just start practicing this, eventually you will get a lockdown. So it's really not that hard. It does take some practice, but if you get used to the new binds, if you use these and then just start practicing 
shooting at stuff, driving around a little bit, you will get this technique of swapping seats, leaning out the window, on lockdown, and even the other seat too. It's all about practice. It is not impossible in any way to get good at without millions of hours in PUBG. The van, the minibus, the budget BRDM, this vehicle is the one where we all go like, well, that's all I got, huh? Full tank is all we can say that it will drive you for the entire game, no problem, pretty much. But other than that, there's there's no point in getting into this car if you can get anything else. Let's just move on. So when it comes to grenades blowing up vehicles, most vehicles will take a big hit when coming up against them. Take a look at the info right here on your screen. Now we have a couple of pointers here. First up with the BRDM, save your nades. Do not ever try to nade a BRDM unless people are coming out of it. Sure, but the versus bullets, there's just no reason to use your god tier utility on that. Now the Roni, there's definitely a little trick here. Watch this, full force. It'll just, if you aim for this bar here in the end, this nade will get stuck on it. So if you're ever going to try to nade a Roni, see if you can stick it there. It can be tough, of course, but it's kind of funny how it just sticks to it. Low tip, the Mirado, the Speedster. This is a Miramai unique vehicle that will haul butt going on the road. However, off-road, it is a little bit bumpy. It can be difficult to control. But it is a fun, fast vehicle that will take you anywhere real quick. Especially the jumps on Mirama. There's a golden edition of this one spawning at Hacienda in the garage. You can pick that up, show it off. But be cautious, if you do have a skin enabled, it will override it. So instead of slowly breaking down when you come up to a compound you want to take, there's a little tip to this one. Simply slam your handbrake, slap the car into the side, and you will get out with no damage done to you. And you can quickly get into that compound whereas if you just ram into something obviously you're gonna take a little bit of damage with more speed than this this is also useful when you come up to care packages slam the handbrake swap the seat go out and get the delicious loot and be on your way yum 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 the pickup truck is another unique vehicle to mirama this thing is kind of a middle ground type of vehicle it does really well off-road but on road, it does get out of control quickly. It can be hard to control because of its tight steering. It will turn wherever you turn. But as said, off-roading, this thing shines. A lot of people are scared of the bikes. And while I can't blame you, there are tips to get safer on these two. Oh, there's no boost on any bikes in this game. So use your finger to hover over that control button. Every time you go over a little jump, hold down the control. That way, the bike won't hit the back wheel and it won't flop you off in the back. So that way, whenever you're riding a bike or a scooter, especially the scooter, because that thing will fly around if you're not prepared for it. Whenever you go over any type of little jump, hold down that control button and be quickly to press space if you need to too. And that way you will rarely ever get slung off the bike. The Roni is a Senna unique vehicle and this is one of my favorites. The way this thing handles is just amazing. It kind of reminds me of a Dacia but off-roading capabilities too. The fuel, never have to worry about running out. The speed does come a little bit short but this car is a really good one to get. Blown up car tires is awesome for eliminating teams late on to have their vehicles available or just shooting targets on the go. However the buggy is a lot stronger than it used to be. It used to be I lost a tire and it would spin out of control. This thing will still go even with two tires. So the buggy is definitely one of my go-to vehicles just off of that. But anyways, cars have different amount of tire HP. Look at the statistics here. I tested a couple of guns of how many bullets they would take to blow out one of these bad boy tires. It goes for bikes too, obviously, but there are three Unique ones. The BRDM cannot get its tires blown. These two simply don't have any tires to blow. So keep that in mind. Spike strips. I know people have asked this. They cannot take out the tires of the BRDM. But everything else will go on one shot from a spike strip. So yeah, there's a little bit about tire damage and how many shots it might take with whatever gun you're using. Shooting tires is awesome because you can eliminate teams from having a vehicle to make any sort of plays later on. And also, if they're camped up on a bridge, same thing. Take their tires out. What are they going to do now? However, keep in mind that these three 
will not care what you do they will keep on driving except for this this will blow up really easily so yeah that's a little bit about tires and that's a blowing up snow bite the tuck shy the tuk tuk whatever way you want to pronounce it is a fun vehicle however it is not very good but it's fun to drive and it's pretty much just for the memes most cars will almost always flip themselves take a look at this three stack tower here they come down and they will try to unflip however nades can still be used to unflip some certain vehicles take a look at the nade damage here but most of the times they will as you can see i've tried a couple of times to get them to flip they will unflip themselves however Cars are just a buggy to get that stuck. You cannot flip that sucker with a nade. You're going to have to get another vehicle from a teammate to push that over. Because a nade will take it out. But you can try with a UAC if it gets flipped on the side. Which is a very rare occurrence. So if you're playing duo or a squad. Try to get a teammate to unknock it first. And then if you have a UAC on the roof or something. You can try to land a nade by its side. To kind of push it away a little bit. But most of the times go for a teammate instead. Or simply you most likely have to end up running on foot. The UAC comes in three different variants. This is probably the overall fan favorite in PUBG. The way it handles is amazing both on-road, off-road. The speed is good, however not fan freaking tastic but it will keep you steady going on hills, anything. And it does offer very good protection if you get the armored version. By killing the engine going downhill, you will gain incredible speed. I know this is something that you might have thought about, but even in the BRDM, this heavy beast you just kill the engine and this thing will go flying because it's building speeds it doesn't need to be a very steep hill like this but it does indeed help with the speed so you wouldn't normally go this fast in a brdm but going downhill that gives you that extra i i don't even know but this thing flies it works with other vehicles too but i just thought it would uh would be a funny thing to show with the brdm because it is kind of a big chunky monkey nice the bike is my favorite just because it's so freaking fast and fun to control in the air. But with the recent fuel nerf, it will not last as long anymore. However, this is the go-to key if you want to catch those airdrops or do cool tricks on mountains, anything. Go nuts. All of the bikes and the Tuxai, I don't know if you want to call this a bike or a car, but these have no boosts. These, however, can be controlled in air, which is unique to them. The scooter is unique to Sanak. And is very cool, fun to drive. However, it does get dangerous. You need to hover that pinky finger over that control button to control this sucker in the air. It is very likely to spin out of control if you do jumps too fast or anything. So be very cautious, but do go full speed because you don't want to be vulnerable. Some cars have an indicator inside of them. These following cars do not. The UAC, the SEMA, the Dacia, and the BRDM. But all of these, Murado, the Buggy, the Roni... The van and the pickup truck have a little boost indicator inside. First up, the Murado. The little RR will start to blink whenever you boost. And here it is without. Next up, we have the buggy. We got a fat blinking lamp whenever we boost. The Roni got a little high speed button in the bottom left corner there. And without. Then our beautiful van even has a little red blinking dot here. Last but not least, the pickup truck. It's got one flashy button in the middle of everything. So only some of the cars have the boost indicator inside, but all cars will have black exhaust pipe smoke coming out of them whenever people are boosting. Without, it's just going to be boring all white. And with. So why we want to know this is for the BRDM. To see if the enemy is boosting, because it, it is very visible to see whenever they're driving by with full boost. And this thing will drain so fast that it's something good to know. The three-seater bike, aka the death trap of PUBG. This thing does allow you to carry an extra team member in there, but be very cautious going on with jumps or anything. This thing is hard to regain control of if you lose it just for a second. When we talk about the BRDM, there's a lot to look at. While it sucks in speed unless you kill the engine going downhill, the full tank will take you a lot longer if you do not use boost. So make sure to never use the boost unless you absolutely have to. There's a set value for its HP, but this is up to what type of weapon you use. Some weapons are weaker against this vehicle. If you look here, the Scorpion would take 500 hits to take out the BRDM and squads. If we look at, well, what's best for this? Up here, we have an arm, car 9, first off the snipers, and then comes the DMRs, followed on by the ARs. 
But if you go down into the low end, some weapons are weak against the BRDM, which is kind of funny because it does not work like this with any other vehicle in the game. When we look at nades too, the nades are pretty much useless against the BRDM because it is like a tank-ish vehicle, right? So here's a complete breakdown of all the guns and how much damage they will do to a BRDM. You can check this full sheet in the description for both vehicle specs and health. The snowmobile is the Vikendi version of the bike. Now the difference is it's more heavy. It will have a harder time flipping though, but it's pretty easy to control. It's fast, but its HP is only 700. So people can blow you up with less than a magazine. And here in the end, we have the snowmobile. This is pretty much a good all arounder vehicle for Vikendi. Not much to say about it. It comes in pretty average. Acceleration time, good in the beginning, falls off a little bit, but that is pretty much it. It is also one of those vehicles that can be controlled in the air. I hope you learned something today. If you have any questions, feel free to throw a comment and I will dig into it and find an answer for you. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, night, afternoon, whatever it is. Peace.